Hello, good afternoon. Um, my name is Matthew Wortley. I'm from Ritsumeikan University, which is based here in Kyoto. Um, I'm delighted to have the chance to speak to you today. Uh, my session is maybe slightly different to the other three sessions that we're going to have later on in the session,、uh, in that I'm not actually talking about the specific example of what's going on at my university. More, more than that, I'm looking back on my experience so far. In international affairs, working in international offices,、um, and hopefully, I'll through this session, through this presentation, I'll be able to maybe challenge you、um, to, to think about what exactly we do as international staff. What is our role?、Um, before I started working at Ritsumeikan, I, was, I worked in、uh, recruitment in international offices in the UK、um, for six years. So I've got ten years' experience in. Very different、uh, context, so the UK and now in Japan. And over those ten years, I've seen a number of different approaches to the way universities regard their international office staff.、Um, and if I can maybe try to split them into two different、uh, schemes, there's maybe the specialist approach, where international office staff are very much thought of as being a very specific role with specific skills. And those skills are something the university values in themselves. The other approach is maybe seeing international activities as just an extension of what goes on across the universities. Maybe this is more of a, a generalist approach, where people may not spend all of their career in international、um, affairs. Maybe they just rotated through on a five-year basis or a, a three-year basis. Maybe they just bring people in on, on short-term contracts to do international、uh, work. So I'm going to look at the specialist approach and the generalist approach, and argue that really universities, if they're going to get the best out of their international internationalisation activities,、um, they do need to be maybe looking at, to develop more of a specialist approach. Now I've, I've used the term international officer throughout the presentation, but actually this isn't just something I think that's. Relevant to administrative staff, I think anybody involved in international activities, whether they're academic or administrative,、um, you know, I think that the work does require a great deal of specialisation. So, kind of international officer is, is shorthand for everybody in this room,、um, everybody involved in international activities. So, a brief overview of the presentation. I'm going to start off by talking about what international offices do, and try from that. To come up with some ideas about、um, what the role of an international officer is, what type of skills and、uh, specialist knowledge are required to be successful in the role, and then I will move on to my argument for why、um, I feel there is the need for specialisation if we are looking to do this effectively, and then I'll、um, have some final thoughts, which I hope will lead to、uh, comments and discussion later on in this session. Obviously, exactly what any one international office at any university does will vary from institution to institution. But typically, the role will include things like the recruitment of international students, exchange programmes, and also, of course, administering joint degree programmes, liaising with overseas partners, the support of specific inter international activities. So this.、Um, Might, might be things like specific research activities that a, a, a department is looking to carry out overseas. Input into the development of the institutional、uh, international strategy, and then the support of international students. Now, actually, the support of international students, I think, is, is one area where、um, experience is particularly crucial、um, in terms of being able to offer to students the support they need. Universities, I think, do have a tendency to regard international students as one group, whereas really, if you've got students from 20 different countries,、um, each of their, their backgrounds, their expectations, their needs will be very different. And I think having an understanding of that is very important in terms of providing efficient and effective support to the students. And that's something that you can only really gain from experience. Actually, maybe travelling to that country, having spent time interacting with students from different backgrounds. 
What you'll notice about all of these roles is that they are external facing to a greater or lesser extent. Many jobs at the university can tend to be essentially inward looking. Um, obviously institutions will always have some sort of uh, eye on the bigger picture, whether it's national level, international level, regional level. But often I think universities tend to focus on to what's going on within the university to an extent. When you're working in international activities, you cannot afford to do that. Um, obviously, you have to be aware of what's going on within the university, but at the same time, you do have to be thinking all the time about the external environment. And so I think that's maybe one big difference. It requires almost a different mindset um, working in international activities compared to uh, maybe many other functions across the university. So from that, we have um, here some points about the international officer role. It's very outward focused, as I've just mentioned. Um, the international officers, again, whether administrative or academic, they have a great deal of opportunity to travel overseas, to interact with organizations, um, universities, schools overseas. And through that, they gain a huge amount of international understanding a huge amount of understanding of what's going on in that particular country. They may pick up critical information about um, government policies towards international education. There's all sorts of valuable, crucial information um, that they can pick up. At the same time, um, by being so externally focused, by spending so much time overseas visiting organizations, interacting with uh, staff from overseas organizations, they are able to develop a, a really important network of staff at universities, in government, in business. This is something that takes time. And I think, crucially, it's something that cannot really be passed on. I cannot pass on to, if I were to retire tomorrow because I win the lottery, fingers crossed. Um, I wouldn't be able to pass on a lot of what I have gained, the experience, the knowledge, to somebody else. And so this is a, one of the real reasons, I think, that specialism and time spent in a role is very important. Because simply it takes time to develop the knowledge, skills, understanding and experience needed to be effective in the role. Also, international office jobs require quite a specific set of skills that not everybody has. Not everybody enjoys um, standing up in front of people, talking. Not everybody enjoys interacting with students at educational fairs. Not everybody enjoys discussing um, the visiting institutions and discussing difficult issues with partner universities. So it, it does require a very specific set of skills. And I think the final point on this slide is one that's quite important. Universities actually work out, need to work out how best to take, a knowledge, uh, take advantage of the knowledge and skills that their international staff have. I think maybe particularly in those institutions to take the more generalist approach um, to, to their international office staff, maybe there's not the appreciation about what skills those staff actually have, what knowledge they actually have, how that could be better used in terms of contributing to uh, the international activities at the university. From that follows that international office staff and the knowledge and experience they have is a huge resource for the university, extremely valuable. It, and as I've mentioned on the previous slide, as it's not a job that anybody can do, the people that can do it, you really need to appreciate their skills, their experience, and treat them accordingly. Maybe it would be a waste to have some, and someone as an exceptional international officer moved to a role, say, in the library, where they're not able to make best use of their skills. When, in, when a, an experienced international office staff member moves on, then, as I've mentioned, because a lot of the skills and experience have, cannot be passed on to their um, 
no, the, the, the person that follows in, them into their job. Any time that a staff moves on, whether it's to a different position within the university or whether it's to a different institution, it's a huge loss to the institution. And all universities are um, you know, ex putting a great deal of effort into their inter international activities, into internationalization. And having the staff with the right skills to support that will help the university do it in the most efficient way. You can internationalize without good staff, but it's quite difficult. Now, if I can just talk very briefly about my experience of, inter of working in the UK and interacting with um, staff from uh, US institutions. In the UK, uh, international office staff are very much regarded as a specialist role. Uh, there's, if you go on to, the, it was mentioned on, in one of the previous presentations about the jobs.ac.uk website where UK jobs are advertised. There's always international office staff positions being uh, recruited for. And they have very specific sets of skills that they are looking for in potential candidates. In the US and the UK, you will find that people have been in international office work, maybe at the same institution, maybe at a number of different institutions, for 5, 10, 15, 20 years. And they are very much valued as the core of the university's international activities. Now, in those universities that take the more general approach to international uh, office staff, that's not the situation. You will have staff that maybe have two or three years' experience. And obviously, what they can bring to the process is going to be that much less um, than staff that have more experience. Finally, um, some final thoughts. It's a fairly obvious statement, but complex tasks require specialist skills. Internationalization within universities is immensely complex, um, very multidimensional. There's a lot that people have to know, be able to take into consideration. It's not just something that anybody can do. Um, you need to make sure that you have people in place with appropriate skills and experience. Good international office staff are hugely valuable to the university in terms of what they can bring to the table. Um, and I think universities, uh, particularly those with a more general approach to staff, do need to uh, maybe appreciate the value that international office staff can bring. Having said all that, I think there is something to learn from the general uh, Generalism, the general approach where more and more people are having um, experience of international office work. In that it helps to avoid the situation where, which I think is quite common at some universities, internationalization is what the international office does. Um, I think having more people with experience of international activities helps to ensure better institution wide buy in to the whole process of uh, internationalization. And as such, I think maybe the, you know, a pattern where you have a core of um, specialized long-term staff in internationalization with maybe then opportunities for other staff from other sections of the university to gain experience um, for shorter periods, I think is maybe the, the ideal model. Now, obviously, university in internationalization, institutional interna internationalization is not something that just the international office does. It requires institution-wide buy-in, um, support from you know, the whole university uh, population. So international officers can't do it on their own. But at the same time, I struggle to think of how a university can effectively internationalize without good international office staff. Um, so I think we can conclude by saying that um, specialist international staff are essential for effective and efficient internationalization and for the universities or institutions to achieve um, everything that they want to. Okay, that's the end of my presentation. I look forward to answering questions later on in the session. Thank you very much.